Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Curling. This is Daily Draw, presented by CoolBet for Sunday, February 13th. We bring this to you each and every day during the games in Beijing, and Kevin and Warren cover all things that's going on at the games. Uh, it comes out about 1 o'clock every afternoon. CoolBet is a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice-related. The logo is a bear, after all. If you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. And boys, what we heard there was uh, a clip of Team Jones last night uh, playing Switzerland and losing. Uh, we, we had Emma Miskew on yesterday, and she talked about the pressure of playing for Team Canada, and uh, we can see now that it is building, and it's building fast. Um, so we're going to talk about all that. We're going to get the updates on the games that happened and the games that are coming up. Uh, also, it's a, it's a video day. How do I look, Kev? Am I good, Kev? Warren? You look very nice, Can Jimmy. Can I get your approval, Warren? Am I all right? No? Just comb your hair, Jimmy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so video, the show's available on YouTube on the Grand Slam of Curling channel. Uh, so let's get right down to it, uh, both uh, Team Canada's, uh, sorry, let's get right to it. Both the men and women were playing for Team Canada yesterday, and we want to get the wrap on that, Kev. It was draw number six for both of them. Uh, and then, Warren, you covered draw seven. So let's start with you, Kevin. Uh, what happened yesterday? Yuck. <laughs> All right. Well, this is kind of the time in the round robin when people start to move and, and figure out where they're going to be in the in the final standings. So let's go uh, through some sheets here. Sheet A, we'll start with, this is men's draw six. So that was uh, e 8 o'clock Eastern. So that was the morning draw over in Beijing. Norway against Sweden. And Norway played a great game. They stole one and four to go up, stole another one and six up to Nicodine gets a deuce back, and uh, Norway has Hammer going home, and Nick steals too. So you, this Swedish group, even when you have them in trouble, you can't put them away. So anyway, so Sweden undefeated still at that point. Sheet B, China, Great Britain, no big shocker here. Uh, China gets one in the first, actually got last rock to start, but then Great Britain gets a four. Gives a, a two to China. So now China's down four to three. Great Britain goes blank, 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 and then three more. Ball game. Oh, see you later. So Great Britain's coming on to the, they're coming on strong. It's how they like to play. Um, so they're, they're, they're looking really good coming down the stretch here. Uh, USA, Canada. And USA, the game started at eight o'clock Eastern. USA showed up at 9.15. Uh, that was too late. Uh, they gave up one in the first, a steal of four, and John Schuster really didn't have anything. He he had an intern bump to give up two. Uh, that was that would have been a perfect shot for him in that one. And uh, one thing, John Schuster, he made a beautiful shot in six to get three to keep the game going, but the game was over really after two ends. Canada won ten to five. And then looking over on sheet Delta and. You know, coming starting this thing ROC, I really thought that uh, that they had a really good shot of making playoffs. I still actually do. They're coming on. They started out just not very very well at all, and they ended up beating uh, with three threes. Ended up beating Italy ten seven. But watch out, watch out for ROC. They're coming on strong. They're playing really well, and you know uh, Sergey Glukov when he gets going, they can be really tough. They just kind of stumbled out of the gate a bit but their game is coming around. Let's go to women's draw number six. So that's uh, that was the one in the morning game uh, in, on the East Coast. Sheet A, we got Denmark against Great Britain. Great Britain is just coming on strong right now. So they ended up winning 7-2. to two. Not much of a game at all. Uh, sheet B, Sheet Bravo was Sweden, USA. I watched, you know, I was doing the, I was doing the Warren, the Warren last night during the night. We had two monitors on. I was calling one game, but I had that game on the second one. So I was doing the lizard eyes and things. Lizard and, Wizard uh, Junior. Trying to watch okay. him. <laughs> lizard, <laughs> lizard Wizard Junior. junior. That's right. okay. yeah. yeah, I'm not the Lizard Wizard. I'm the Lizard <laughs> Junior. So anyway, uh, a big steal of three and nine to put it away. But really, Sweden controlled that game for the most part after the first half. The first half, U.S. played pretty good. Second half, they did not play very well. 
uh, 10 to 4 final there. Sheet C, we've got uh, Korea taking on China, and China ended up uh, winning that one in a really, really good game all the way through. Well played, lots of chances, but in the end, uh, China ended up winning. And Switzerland, Canada. Now, this. I thought was going to be a really, really good game, but Switzerland got out front 3-1 to one after four ends, and Canada got a deuce back, stole one and six. All of a sudden, you think, all right, hey, hey, we got a game here. Canada's one up, forces in seven, so Canada's got hammer playing eight. If they just score one even, and then there's one hammer each, they have an excellent chance of winning. Steal of two and eight, steal of two more and nine, Jimmy. Uh-huh. And the score uh-huh. ends up being 8-4. Switzerland, so now Canada as they're back against the wall, big time at one win and three losses on the women's side, Jim. So it was definitely moving day, and uh, for the Canadian women, they moved the wrong way. For the U.S. women, they actually moved the wrong way as well. Is that the, uh, Kevin, the um, uh, Team Canada game against Switzerland? They, like you said, it was a great game through seven ends, uh, and I watched it. Jennifer Jones misses the the appeal on the high guard that she's trying, and like she missed the whole rock almost completely. Uh, is that kind yeah, of the worst uh, shot you've seen her throw in a long time? Well, I don't know about that. It's just it was a fairly simple shot, like right. appeal you should make. Um, even if she makes that though, a good guard might have been a steal of one. Um, but you make the simple. You know, one thing about curling, Wayne Madaw said it great. Make the open hits, draw the eight foot. You do well. Well, same, <laughs> that's the way it is. If you make the simple shots, then the the more difficult ones don't come. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the, the bottom line. You need to make the simple ones. Right. Uh, Warren, you did the men's draw uh, number seven. Uh, we're getting to be about halfway through. So um, bring us up to speed there, Warren. A few games. Well, this was an interesting game from the point of view of Kevin said simple shots, and I watched John Schuster play in the latter part of the game and going like, just play the simple shot, John. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll start at the fifth end. USA is leading China 5-3. to Schuster makes a a great shot in the sixth. China is counting a rock in the forefoot. USA has got one biting the front of the four. Schuster comes down with a very delicate shot. He chips that one at the front of the four into the full four, rolls the other one over into full four as well, ends up counting two. The U.S. goes ahead seven to four, which you thought that would have been kind of the difference right there, but China blanked the seventh. In the eighth, China takes a single. And then the ninth, Schuster again tries a, a, a strange shot, I thought. He could have drawn or hit on the nose, I believe, for a single point and been up three coming home, but he tried a... I thought a very difficult long double that would have ended up potentially blanking the end. Tried it, missed it, rolled across the face of the second stone. China steals another single, and now the score is 7-6. And Schuster has to make a last rack draw at the forefoot in the last end for his 8-6 win. So, kind of an interesting finish. The big game on the ice this morning probably was Switzerland versus Italy. And again, we probably would have thought that the Swiss would have taken that game fairly easily, but not so much. After the sixth end, the score was 5-4 to four Italy based on the strength of a three that they took in the sixth end. The seventh was blanked. Switzerland's Benoit Schwartz attempts a long raise run through for a, a triple raise. It misses. Italy steals another one, and it's now 6-4 to four Italy. Schwartz has a draw of the button for one in the ninth, but decides to try a nearly impossible shot, in my opinion, for two. Misses it. Italy steals two more. Scores 8-4 to four in Italy's favor. Italy runs Switzerland out of stones in the 10th, and they pick up their first win of the event. And look out for this team. We always said Joel Ritanos was a good player and a good team, and they certainly showed it this morning. In the third game that was on the ice, Great Britain versus Denmark. Probably not much to say there. They were ahead, Great Britain 5-2 to two after five ends. In the 8th end, Moat makes a raise takeout for three to go in front, 8-3. to three. Denmark concedes the game, and that was pretty much it. Taking a look at some of the percentages over the last three draws, which I think show us some interesting things. In the men's draw earlier in the day, the USA-Canada game. The Canada won that one 10-5, but look at the percentages. Gushu shot 94%. The Canadian team was 90 overall. Just an excellent game for them. On the ice at the same time, as Kevin mentioned, look out for Bruce Mowat. He's gaining strength. He's for real. 
In that game against China, Mowat shot 99%. They were 91 as a team. China was 90 as a team. Mowat just squeezed a 7-6 to six victory. In women's draw number 6, that one Jones lost to Switzerland 8-4. to four. And if you look at the percentages, Jones was 73%, while Alina Petz was 88. But the Canadian team was 80, the Swiss team was only 83, so it was a difference between the two people throwing the fourth stone that made the difference. Men's draw number 7 came between Italy and Switzerland. The Italian team shot an average of 89%, uh, certainly their best performance in the entire event. In the game between Great Britain and Denmark, mow it again. Watch out for him. 94%, their team was 88 I think if you want to pick a winner on the men's side right now, I'd be looking at Great Britain because uh, they're just uh, shooting very, very well. The game with Schuster and China, same thing. Schuster was 89%, but Ma Shue was 88%. And the U.S. team was 91 over, overall, but the score uh, really didn't suggest that the Chinese team were playing as well as they were. So the standings at this point in time, let's first take a look at the women. Bit of a dogfight going on here still. First place, Switzerland at 5-0. and oh. Japan is at 3-1. Three, three countries at 3-2. and two. Great Britain, Sweden, United States. Korea is at 2-2. Two and two. China is at 2-3. and three. Canada, 1-3. and three. Denmark, 1-4. and four. And the ROC, 0-4. And, and as Kevin says, that record is not indicative of their play. Canada, of course, is right down there now. They've got uh, r really... No chance to, to drop another one, I think, and have an opportunity. There's still eight teams, however, alive, in my opinion, on the women's side. On the men's side, Sweden's on top at 5-0. and Then we have Great Britain, 4-1. and Canada, ROC, and Switzerland are at 3-2. and USA, 3-3. Three and three. Norway, 2-3. and three. China, 2-4. and four. Italy, 1-4. and four. And Denmark, 0-5. And, and probably there are seven teams still pretty much in the running to qualify on the men's side, and that's the way it is at the moment. Great job, Warren. Um, we said at the top of the show uh, that, you know, we're halfway through the round, Robin, that it's all about the pressure of playing for Team Canada that Emma Miskew <coughs> spoke about yesterday. Uh, when you guys gave your analysis of some of these games, you know, you made reference to a pretty easy shot here, pretty easy shot here, uh, but they missed, they missed. Kevin, it's, it's, it's got to be, as we look at uh, where we stand now halfway through the round robin what your thoughts are a lot of it's got to be an indication of pressure here that that people aren't pulling off easy shots well yes it's olympic pressure there's no question about that the olympics is different than anything else um you know it's, it's where they stand the two canadian let's talk about the two canadian teams a little bit mm -hmm. um the men's team I, I think are sitting pretty well playing italy italy came out with a good game but canada should be able to win that game. They got China, ROC. ROC is coming on, but still, Canada should be able to get them. Bruce Mallet, that'll be a tough one in their last test. But even if they were to lose to to Bruce, they would end up at six and three. Which, with ROC having a lot of really tough games yet, um, that should get them the fourth spot, or even, maybe even third, but probably the fourth spot. So Canada, I think, is looking okay. Uh, USA, three and three. They play Switzerland, Italy, and Denmark. The big one coming up is their next game is playing against Switzerland. If they can manage to beat Benoit Schwartz and Peter de Cruz, they, sh they could end up at 6-3 and three, tied with Canada. Um, but I think that's going to be a really tough game for both teams, for USA and Switzerland. That's going to be a real battle mm -hmm. for who's going to survive this thing. Um, on the women's side, Canada's in real trouble. They still play um, ROC. They st and I expect them to come on yet mm -hmm. on the women's side. I expect... Um, Alina Kovaleva to, to really start playing well. Uh, Great Britain, you got to play them. you got to play Tabitha Peterson, who's still playing very well. Uh, just second and third, the middle of the USA team, have got to get playing better. Uh, Denmark, China. So Canada's got some tough, tough games ahead, and they're not playing very well. So that's worrisome. Uh, the U.S. on the women's side, you've got Korea, and then Switzerland, Canada, Japan. Yikes. Right. That's who, that, I'll repeat that. That's who the U.S. have to play yet, not who they've played. They have to play South Korea, fantastic team. Switzerland, real good, obviously. Canada and Japan. So I don't like uh, U.S. ladies' chances here. They just, they're paying, playing the heat of the group now and uh, the middle of their lineup not playing well. It's a scary time for the U.S. ladies' team. Uh, very good, Kevin. Uh, 
Watch out for Switzerland to walk their way into the playoffs for both men and women. Uh, what we're what we're seeing unfolding. Um, Warren, what do you think of Team Canada with the men and women halfway through here? I think they're both in tough. Certainly, I think uh, Gushu's team is in the best position of the two. He's uh, He's got the opportunity. He could lose another game and still very much be, be in the heat of things, but I wouldn't want to lose more than one, and he's got he's got a tough route to, to follow, uh, particularly because he's got to play three teams that are coming on strong in the way of uh, Italy, China, and ROC. And he's also got to play Bruce Mawichet, and so his route is not easy. Jennifer Jones, she's at the point she cannot lose another game. And she as well, Great Britain, USA, China, Denmark. The only one in there that would probably be an automatic win should be is Denmark. But then again, they've had moments of brilliance. So neither one has an easy route. And uh, they're going to have to play really, really well to come out in the end. The Gushu team are playing well. Jones are struggling a bit. So I think it looks good for Gushu still. But uh, Jennifer Jones has, has got a little bit of a road to, to hoe. We had a poll on our Facebook site yesterday. Asked the public, that our members, our Facebook group, who they thought was going to qualify. On the men's side, <clears throat> I think it was pretty clear. They think Canada, Sweden, Britain, and Switzerland are the four teams. And below that, there really wasn't any indication that would suggest that they thought anybody else had a, a shot. But on the women's side, it was a little different. Certainly, they were in favor of Sweden, Switzerland, and Canada. They thought were going to be in there. And then Britain, USA, Japan, and Korea all registered. So from that end of things, that's what the Facebook group thinks. A lot still in the running on the men, women's side, but probably pretty much uh, cut and dried on the men's side. But I don't totally agree with that either. So it's uh, it's going to be uh, a fun couple of days here as we get towards the finish line. Right. Come on, Jennifer. Dig deep, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we, we need you now. Kev, you've always said four losses. Uh, not good in this format uh, in the round robin. Uh, and she... She's one away from that uh, toast, Kev, if she loses this next game. Well, no, uh, you can get in as long as your draw the button good I, is good. I don't know uh, what Team Canada's draw the button total is. I don't know. I wish they had that posted somewhere where you could find it easily. And maybe it is. I just can't find it. But I, it'd be interesting to know because at 5-4, and four, there would likely be ties. Um, now, I... And it goes down to uh, head-to-head, and if that's insolvable, then it goes to draw the button. So draw the button is such a huge thing. It should be right on the front page, <laughs> but I don't seem to be able to yeah. find it. So hopefully it is, but because it's a because now without tiebreakers, it's it's a massive thing. Your uh, your last stone draw um, total, right. and but I, I I can't find it. So anybody out there knows where it is? I'd love to know if you can let us know. That'd be great. Yeah, I do, and it's not very good. Uh, they were saying last night uh, on the broadcast. So, um, anyway, good luck to them. Let's go. Uh, okay, Warren, uh, you were away yesterday, and uh, so Emma Miskew replaced you, uh, and she did a great job, Warren. Okay, you should be shaking in your boots. Uh, so we did our we did our usual we did our usual picks. Uh, Kevin, you made yours. Uh, Emma, we got Emma to weigh in. Uh, how'd you guys do, Kevin? Have you have you kept track of this? I did. Um, so in the uh, so what we did, Warren, just so you know, is that uh, I picked the men's games. There's seven men's games, and then Emma picked for you the four women's games. You didn't do so good, Warren. Um, <laughs> but let's start with the men's. So the first draw, Norway, Sweden. I picked Sweden. I was correct. Uh, China, Great Britain. I picked Great Britain. Correct. USA, Canada. I picked Canada. Correct. Italy, ROC. I picked ROC. So four for four on there. And the last three games, the men's, uh, Denmark, Great Britain, Great Britain, and then Switzerland, Italy. I got that one wrong. I picked the Swiss. Italy won the game, so I was incorrect. China, USA, USA. So I was six for seven, so not bad, Jimmy. Wow. After yesterday's total, better, better, wow. better, better. Look at you go. Yep. Well, rolling again. How, how well, did after I put yesterday, it this way? How did Warren Miskew do? We'll put it that way. Uh, well, Warren and Miskew didn't do so well. Um, Denmark, Great Britain. Pick Great Britain. That was correct. USA, Sweden. Picked Sweden. That was correct. But then picked uh, South Korea over China. Picked Korea. Nope. China won. Switzerland, Canada. Picked Canada. I think, you know, picking with the heart. But uh, 
Switzerland won. So two and two for the uh, Miskew Hansen duel. Uh oh. Uh, you know where you, you know. Yeah, there. Uh, you know what, Kev? <laughs> there, there's. You could say this, Kev. There's Warren. There's Warren right, right there in my rear view mirror. Okay, he's starting to pull away, Warren. Okay, he's starting to pull away. He's about to lap you. Okay, if you don't improve, you get another. You'll get, you'll get another shot today. Uh, a couple other things we talked yesterday about um, uh, the the technical issues, uh, and we want to we want to talk to you guys about that, Warren. Uh, also, uh, Kev, prior to yesterday's games, uh, the stones were sandpapered. What's that all about? Why are they doing it? Uh, well, actually, uh, so I just found out from uh, Corey Robinson is a guy on the on the ground um, with NBC. He's uh, our field reporter, great guy actually, and uh, they're being done about as we speak. After men's draw seven, they were going to be sanded. So um, about now, before the uh, the eight o'clock evening game, uh, Eastern. So the the morning game, so during the night, they will be done. Um, so we should see a big difference in them. And what that means is they rough them up, they sand them before the event to get some good curl. Mm -hmm. And uh, over with all the use, because you've got the men's and the women's plays, so lots of games going on, they just gradually wear off. The, the scratchiness wears off and they get smooth again. And that's what's happening. That's why you're getting uh, maybe three, three and a half feet of curl where you should have four, four and a half feet, maybe even five, but they don't like that at the Olympic and World Curling Federation events. They like to have more like four and a bit, just outside edge of eight to draw a button. So that's what uh, it should be back to um, starting this evening's draws in North America. That's uh, you, you should be out into the 12-foot circle uh, after that. So, But they're re-sanding re them. That's kind of a common practice now. It's it's for the curlers. It's frustrating because the the rocks all change again. So you you do all the rock matching and all that work, and then once you sand them again, they all change again. So um, it makes it a bit frustrating for the people keeping track. But also from the curler's point of view, though, having you know, middle eight to the button, mm -hmm. that's not so much fun either because a, a rock three quarter buried you can't even get at. So it kind of you can. There's only certain shots that can be made. Some aren't possible. And that's a bit of a problem. So right. hopefully it'll smarten up, get a little more curl, so the curlers can make more delicate shots around guards and so on. Right. The the bottom of the rocks, Kev, when they when they show up for the first time, uh, are they completely smooth, or or did you tell me there's like a little ridge that goes all the way around, and that's what they're 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 roughing up, or is it the whole bottom of the rock that they're sandpapering? Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. So it's, it's a running edge that's about uh, oh I don't know three thirty seconds of an inch, something like that. Uh, the running edge around the bottom, sort of like a skate blade, but not that sharp. And that's okay. what it's sort of like on the bottom. You can feel it with your finger if you touch the bottom. And and that's what they're roughing up so that you get the extra curl um, with sandpaper. And and that it's done everywhere in the world now with curling stones. At the right. club level, you don't have to do it as often. But when you've got this many games at a high level being played, they, they do it halfway through the week now, and that's what's happening uh, as we speak. Okay, uh, good job, Kevin. Gosh, Kevin, God forbid we lost your video there for a second. Okay, we need that pretty face of yours on here all day. Okay. <laughs> um, speaking of pretty faces, Warren, uh, you're going to give us uh, your, your take on the talk we had yesterday about the, the many technical timeouts that uh, Jennifer Jones certainly was asking for with, with trouble with the with the handles weren't on these rocks. I was watching again this morning the USA game uh, three times. I counted that the handles malfunctioned again, and that's that's terrible. I, I don't know what kind of testing was done with those handles before that whole thing started, but that's craziness. I mean, those rock handles are very very essential. They've got to be used. Uh, it's the only way to deal with the hog line. The hog line has to be followed. And that's the only way of doing it. But I, I'm of the opinion that they have to have a tech on site with all these events. It looks after those handles, and that is their job to make sure they're properly serviced before the event starts. They're all properly tested. Uh, it's put in the hands of the ice makers. The ice makers are very busy people, and it kind of becomes an afterthought for them. And, and I'm not being critical of them in any way, but if something happens, they're the ones who are called, oh, yeah, and what they usually do is just change it because... They don't know the technical functioning of the handle or the details of it, so there needs to be a person on site 
that I think looks after the handles and does nothing else and is a person qualified to technically deal with right. it because right. it just can't, you, you can't do that. That's terrible. What, uh, Kevin, what's the setup for, uh, you know, we all see the stones, we all see the green light flashing. What is, what is in the hog line, built into the hog line that's set, you know, that, that doesn't allow you to release the rock after the hog line? Is it like an electric eye or something that runs across it or? Yeah, well, I'm no big techie person. That's for I guess I'm an ice maker, so I'm not <laughs> I'm not that techie of a fellow either. But if you're if you're still holding on to the stone when it crosses, there's a, a it's a steel plate. Uh, but I'm not sure the technology that's mm-hmm. in it um, at the hog line. If you've still got a hold of that rock when it hits the hog line, uh, then the red lights go on. You just have to release it before the uh the hog line now how the technology works apparently uh, not all the time but mm-hmm. usually there's not that much trouble like over all the years that i played with the uh with the electronic handles they worked fine like we didn't have much trouble you'd have the odd one jim like it, it, it's not perfect but boy not very many in all the years i played with the electronic handles did i have much trouble and uh but this is remarkable how many issues there are uh just uh, the ua USA uh, Norway men's game. There were five. I just kept track. Most games I'm not keeping track. There's there's a lot of them, and but that game I actually kept track, and there were five in that game. Just one game, let alone all the sheets and per draw. So I don't know. It's probably somewhere around ten technical timeouts per draw. Wow. Like yeah. it's it's it, it's it's too many, um, and it, it really uh, messes up the thrower's timing, uh, their focus, concentration. Because you don't want to have to deal with that. You know, you get in the hack and you're ready to make a really big shot and you go to reset, like tip it, reset, nothing happens. Well, you can't throw it. You've got to call a technical timeout. Now that gets out of, gets you out of your sink. You're, 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 you get all messed up and mm-hmm. it's, it's too bad for the players. But you're right, Warren, something needs to be done so that it doesn't become such a problem. Because you're right, we need those, at least this type of handle. Like, you know, maybe we need the technology to maybe step up a little bit more. But it's a problem here at the Olympics. It's a relatively simple situation. So the the sensor in the hog line, if your handle is still on, or hand is still on the handle, once the rock touches that sensor, it completes a circuit, and vir- virtually it, it makes the red light go on. So it's the the body, uh, the hand being on that handle, it completes the circuit. So if the hand is off the handle, the circuit is not completed, the light doesn't go on. So that aspect of it is fairly fairly simple, but it's got to be got to be dealt with with a little more i would say seriousness than it is uh, good stuff boys uh, we're gonna take a little break when we come back uh what we do each and every day on our special edition of daily draw is get your picks and uh if you like to throw a few shekels down go to cool bet and uh start listening to kevin Okay, Warren, you, you you need to you need to pull it up. Uh, it's going to get tough today. Yeah, you're not, we're not. I'm. You're not quite as bad as I think. Both of you, of course, have winning records, and uh, but Kevin's our guy right now. So stick around. When we get back, we're going to get your picks. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in. We do it each and every day here. It drops about one o'clock, by the way. Uh, people are reaching out to me saying, when when does it come out? Uh, and of course, we're going to do it every day for the rest of the Olympics. Uh, boys were. Only halfway through. Seems like we've been doing this for a month, you know, picking these games. And um, Warren, uh, no rest for you. You're going to be getting up at 4 a.m. again. Kevin, uh, you're you're the, you're the same. Just walk around, <laughs> keep your eyes closed. But uh, hang in there, boys. Hang in there. Warren, before we get to your picks, um, we saw you uh, last night when I was watching the Jennifer Jones uh, game. Um, they flash to the stands. There's always a bunch of other curlers in there. I like it. They give, give you the sort of, the, look who's in the crowd, look who's in the crowd. Anne, Merling, Anne Merklinger was there. Uh, she's the CEO of Own the Podium. What is Own the Podium, Warren? Own the Podium was actually created uh, prior to the 2010 Olympics, and it was an attempt of the federal government to create a fund that would be able to allow Canadian athletes an opportunity to draw on some additional money to aid in their training and it's pretty much it's it's based on your performance at the particular olympic level but world level as well as to how much money individual sports get so it's kind of a complicated formula of the funding between sport canada which is pretty much con- con- controlled i believe by own the podium and the canadian olympic committee 
And so Anne kind of sits in the position there of she's liaison with the Canadian Olympic Committee as well. And I think more or less she's the one that coordinates how much money each sport gets for each quadrennial. And it's it's based on performance to a very large degree as to how many medals you win. Uh, I think by the standard, I know the Olympics over that four-year period count for about 75% of your funding and your success at world championships about 25%. Very good. Uh, thank you for that. So, Kev, if you're a smart curler, you want to be nice to Anne. Okay, she's the one dole, doling out the cash. Okay, That's hi right. Ann, I love you. How are you? Send some flowers now and again, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Chocolates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy, someone cut my lawn again. Uh, who? No, it's one of the curlers. Uh, okay, let's get to the draws uh, today. Uh, we want your cool back picks. Let's start with uh, you, Kevin, on women's draw number seven is coming up. All right. Well, let's see with the. Uh, Women's Draw 7, we've got three games. And that's uh, starting at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight. China, Japan. I've got to pick Japan. Canada, ROC. That's going to be a really, really good game. I've got to go with Canada, but that's a really good game. USA, Korea. Gee whiz. Uh, the, you said, Warren, these are going to be tough to pick. I think you're right. Um South Korea is coming on pretty strong. They were the silver medalists in the last Olympics. I've got to go with them. So Japan, Canada, South Korea I've got in the first draw. And then the men's draw, middle of the night, Eastern. Canada, Italy. I will go with Canada. Denmark, Norway. Norway playing great. They should have beat Sweden in the last one. Gave up the steals coming home. So I'll pick Norway. ROC, Sweden. Sweden's rolling. I'll pick them. Switzerland, Great Britain. I've got to go with Great Britain. Women, Switzerland, Sweden. Whew. Sweden, they're just not playing as well as they normally do. I'll go with Switzerland. Great Britain, Canada in the women. Wow. I got to go with Jennifer Jones on that one. I'll take Canada. Japan, Korea. I think Korea is going to come on strong. I'll pick South Korea in that one. Denmark, ROC. I'll go with ROC. So those are my picks. Jimmy? There we go. Okay. Yeah, Japan. And you, you did pick Canada both games. Uh, they need them. They need all their games. Okay, Warren, your picks for today's draws. Well, they differ a little bit, but not a lot. Starting with the women's draw number seven, I, I believe as well Japan will, will defeat China. They are, uh, they're playing well. Canada, I think, are going to be in tough with the ROC because they're getting better. But Jennifer Jones has got to, it's got to dig down. She's got to win that game. So... I'm going to pick Canada. USA, Korea. That's where I will slightly different with Kevin. The USA team overall are playing very well. Tabitha Peterson stumbled a bit in the last game, but Nina Roth is, is right up there. She's in the high 80s. Uh, the Korean team is coming on, but I believe the USA will take that game. Mm -hmm. Men's draw number eight, Canada, Italy. Again, great performance this morning by Italy. But uh, Brad Gushu is also going well. He's got to win that game, so I'm going to pick Canada. Norway, Denmark, uh, I will go with Norway as well. ROC in Sweden, Nick Adin is playing uh, lights out. ROC, Glukov is coming on. I think it'll be a good game, but Sweden will take that game. Switzerland, Great Britain. That could be, to some degree, the game of the day. I, I believe it's going to be a tight-fought battle, but uh, the buzzshaw ca called Mollet uh, is uh is is getting better and better and he's going to take that game i believe and men, in women's draw number eight i think switzerland will go against uh, will take over sweden as kevin suggested hasselberg is not quite there and uh elena pats has been playing very well great britain canada uh i again will go with jennifer jones eve muirhead has been up and down with great britain she's played very well at times but other times has stumbled and again jennifer jones has got to win that game and i look at jennifer jones mm -hmm. When her back is against the wall, she performs. Japan, Korea. I'll differ slightly with Kevin on this one. I think Japan, again, is, uh, has got the ability. Korea's coming on, but I'm going to go with Japan. And ROC, Denmark, uh, I will also go with ROC. That's it. Okay, boys. Uh, well done. Uh, if you like those picks, uh, you can go to, the, uh, go to Cool Bet and uh, lay down a few shekels. Uh, if I just would have stuck with... Either one of you, I would have done way better than me being about, I think I'm probably about 3 and 18. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so, uh, that's why you don't hear me anymore. Some guy emailed me yesterday and said, Jerome, how come you're not doing picks anymore? 
I said, I'll tell you why. What's that expression? <laughs> I'm terrible. That's what it is uh, right there. So uh, thanks a lot to Cool Bet, a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice-related. Uh, the logo is a polar bear, after all. If you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. So once again, go over to their website and uh, lay down some cash. Uh, go with Kevin. Uh, a reminder again to send us an email, insidecurling at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Who better than Kevin and Warren to answer your questions? And, uh, and they do. Also, Facebook, Lively. Very good group on Facebook. Rod Paulson looks after that. Uh, why don't you join our Facebook group? Facebook group, sorry, and uh, check out the Facebook page. Okay, boys, uh, another day of curling coming up. Canada men's team, okay. Uh, we talked uh, yesterday about the pressure building, and man, there, you know, there can't be more pressure on anyone right now than Jennifer Jones. And by the way, yeah, you guys, uh, I'll tell you what, where you were impressive. A couple of shows ago, we titled it uh, Double Trouble. When uh, you guys picked Sweden to wipe out Canada, and you were right on that on that uh, that day, so I'm bringing that up because the producer gave me hell saying you didn't, you didn't call us double trouble. You didn't you didn't give us any any credence, man, for what we did. So uh, we're back again each and every day. It drops about one o'clock. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This has been Daily Draw. Talk to you later, boys. <laughs>